did humans come from? What is our evolutionary history? There are so many questions as to how we got here today, and by studying our very long, distant relatives, it helps us to put some of the puzzle pieces together. And that is what today's video is all about. Welcome back, bumblebees. Here are the top 10 early human species they didn't teach you about in school. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Sahalanthropus to Chadensis. This species is one of the oldest known in the human family tree. We're starting right at the beginning. This species is said to have lived about six to seven million years ago in West Central Africa. It is thought that they had the ability to walk upright, and this may have helped them diversify the habitats that they could live in. Although we only have cranial remains of this species, studies have shown that they likely had a mix of ape-like and human-like features. The ape-like features include a small brain, a sloping face, really prominent brow ridges and an elongated skull. In terms of human-like features, it is said that they had smaller canine teeth, a shorter middle part of their face, and a spinal cord opening underneath the skull, which likely helped them to walk on two feet. It wasn't until 2001 when the remains of the species were discovered, making it quite a recent discovery. With this discovery came the knowledge that the early humans were a bit more widespread at this time than we had originally believed. In our number 9 spot today, we have Australopithecus and amensis. Back in 1965, a research team led by Brian Patterson found a single arm bone of an early human at a site which was located in northern Kenya. This was an amazing find, but without additional human fossils, they were unable to identify exactly which species it belonged to. Skip to 1994, and another research team at the same site were able to find numerous teeth and bone fragments, and through these additional samples, they were able to determined that these fossils were of a very, very primitive hominin, and they were able to name a new species. This species had a combination of traits that can be found in both apes as well as humans. The upper end of the tibia, or the shin bone, shows us signs that it was likely that this species was bipedal. Because of the long forearms and certain features that were found in the wrist bones, it is also suggested that this species likely climbed trees as well. Based on their jaws and teeth, we think that they were likely plant eaters in general, and that their diet mostly consisted of fruits and nuts. In our number 8 spot today, we have Homo habilis. This name is said to translate into handy man, and it refers to a species of humans that evolved in Africa sometime prior to 2 million years ago, so clearly quite some time ago. It is believed that Homo habilis went extinct about 1.5 million years ago. By the middle of the 20th century, it was starting to be accepted that humans first evolved in Africa from a group of early hominins known as Australopiths. Back in 1960, however, a research team in Tanzania found fossils that would sort of confirm this in a way. This fossil was one that sort of fell into a gap between Australopiths and humans as we know them now. It was the discovery of Homo habilis, the first true human species to evolve. From what has been found, which is mostly fragmentary fossils, it has been determined that H. habilis seemed to have a brain that was significantly larger than Australopiths and more similar to later human species. It is believed that H. habilis behaved in a human-like way, they made stone tools, which at the time was thought to be different than their previous ancestors. This is exactly part of the reason why they were named Handyman, but at this point in time we now know that Australopiths also made tools, but the name of H. habilis still stands, and they are very important in the course of our evolution. In our number 7 spot today we have Aurorin tungenensis. Also referred to as the Millennium Man, which is way easier for me to pronounce, this species is another one of the earliest on the human family tree, and they are said to have lived about 6 6 million years ago. This species was discovered in 2001 by a team of French paleontologists who were searching in the Tunjan Hills region of central Kenya. Here they found over a dozen fossils that belonged to the early humans of this time period. The people of this species are said to have been about the size of a chimpanzee, and they had small teeth with thick enamel, not unlike us modern humans. While any discovery of early human remains is fascinating and super important, it is said that the most important fossil from this species is that of an upper femur, which shows evidence that this species was bipedal. They likely still climbed trees and that sort of thing, but they also likely walked upright. In our number 6 spot today, we have Australopithecus 
afarensis. I had actually never learned of this species before researching for this video, but it turns out that this was one of the longest lived and best known early human species, as researchers have been able to uncover the remains of more than 300 individuals. It is said that this species was first seen somewhere between 3.85 and 2.95 million years ago, and that they survived for an impressive 900,000 years, which is four times longer than we as Homo sapiens have been around. More similar to chimpanzees than modern humans, the children of this species grew quite rapidly after birth, and they reached adulthood faster than we do, which means that they likely had less time for parental guidance and socialization. This species had both human and ape-like characteristics. They had more ape-like face proportions and a brain case for a brain, quote, the size of a modern human brain. They had long, strong arms and curved fingers which shows that they must have climbed trees. This ability to live both on the ground and in trees likely is what helped them to survive for almost a million years through climate and environmental changes. In our number 5 spot today, we have Homo antecessor. The discovery of this species starts out at a huge archaeological site in Spain called Grandolina Cave. This cave is rich with history, but as relates to this list, at this site there has been found the remains of a hominin group called Homo antecessor. This discovery came in 1997 and this species is often described as having a mix of modern and primitive traits. It is thought that there were similarities with this species between both other species. Neanderthals and Denisovans, which shows that they all must have shared some common ancestor. In our number four spot today, we have Ardipithecus cadaba. This is a species that had its discovery in 1997, but when the paleontologist who first found a piece of lower jaw lying on the ground, he didn't think that he had just discovered a new species. After 10 more specimens were found, it was safe to say that a new early human ancestor had been identified. The remains, which included this jaw, as well as hand and foot bones, partial arm bones, and a collarbone were dated back to about 5.6 to 5.8 million years ago. The toe bones showed us that this species walked on two feet, and the fossils of other animals found in the area where these early human remains were found showed that they lived in a mix of woodlands and grasslands. Because we have jaw remains, we have been able to conclude that they likely ate a variety of fibrous foods. Their back teeth were larger than a chimpanzee's, but their front teeth were much more narrow. In our number three spot today, we have Kenyanthropus platyops. This is one of the more mysterious early human species, as there is still so much that we don't know about them. What we do know is that they lived in Kenya about 3.5 million years ago, and that they lived during the same time as the Australopithecus afarensis that we talked about earlier. Despite them living at the same time, however, this species had much smaller molars, which researchers believe reflects a different diet. This means that these two species likely did not compete for food. There are some people who believe that us as Homo sapiens are related to this species because of their facial features that are more similar to modern humans compared to the faces of some of the other human species that existed at the time. Not everyone in the scientific community is convinced yet, but hopefully once more specimens and fossils are found, we will be able to get a really solid answer. This species remains the only one in their genus, with their name translating to flat faced from Kenya. In our number two spot today, we have Homo naledi. Also called the star man, this species certainly was an interesting one as they had quite an unusual mix of features. It is said that parts of their skeletons would be indistinguishable from modern humans, but that there were other parts that seemed almost ape-like. This species had a brain that was only slightly larger than a chimpanzee, but they were still capable of sophisticated and more modern human-like behavior. No one is exactly sure when these guys guys existed or when exactly they went extinct, and it isn't quite clear where they sit in the evolutionary tree, but some experts believe that they may have lived at the same time of Homo habilis that we talked about earlier. They believe that they probably went extinct more than a million years ago after being outcompeted by later species like Homo erectus. There are others who don't agree with this, however, and who believe that this species lived much more recently, but that then begs the question as to how humans who looked so primitive could have survived up until so recently. In our number one spot today, we have Homo luzonensis. An island-dwelling population, this species was discovered on the island
island of Luzon in the Philippines, and it is thought that they lived here around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. This species was discovered through just 13 bones from teeth, fingers, toes, and a femur that were found on the island. These remains belonged to three different individuals, but they gave us insanely valuable insight into this previously unknown species. In 2019, it was determined that these bones were different enough from the other known past human species that they were then classified into their own new species category. It is crazy to think that it's still so recently that we're discovering brand new species that are really important to the history of humans and how we got here today. It is said that the toe and finger bones of this species are quite interesting as they are slightly curved, which is a feature that is shared by living species of tree dwelling primates. It is thought that this may suggest that for this species, living in trees might have still been a part of their everyday lifestyle. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozolowski, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Homo luzonensis. Luzon. Homo naledi. I already forgot what I just said. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Sahelanthropus to Chadensis. 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 Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Sahelanthropus. It's and I'm doing it one more time and we're going with whatever comes out of my mouth. Australopithecus anamensis, anamensis. That these fossils were a very, that these were fo, what? That these were fossil was a, that doesn't even make any sense. Aurorin, Aurorin, Tungenesis, Tungen, Tungenesis. Kenyanthropus platyops. It is thought that this may suggest that for these, it is thought, it is thought that this may suggest that these guys were so close to the end.